All right, so we ordered the sheet metal to cover up the cabinets, which I'm very excited about. It's sitting on our trailer right now. Um, our total sheet metal cost, uh, including cuts and folds plus material, was $800. So we've got our sheet metal here. We're gonna get it unloaded and uh, back in the truck. And sorry if you hear weird music, I'm on hold with the junkyard so I can get a new door for our car because uh, we got hit and had to take it off. Trim this a little bit. That'll work. That fits splendidly. Look at that! Cabinet number one. So if you didn't see how we measured this, we have one inch flanges that we put over here. You can see it's a little bit too tall. That's not a big deal. Um, we'll be riveting this on. So I didn't want to weld all of these cabinets. It'd get very uh, messy. So this is our fold method. We just went, brought it to a sheet metal company locally and we'll just drill through here and rivet every, I don't know, four inches. That'll create a nice watertight seal that allows us to have our cabinet. This will be our bathroom area right here. So our sink will be here. We'll have probably a, I don't know, not a pantry, but a little medicine cabinet behind it. And that will give us a really nice watertight seal on this side. So you can see that fit in there really nicely. And although we've got a little bit of some ups and downs here, you'll see we can trim this. It's a little bit too high. That'll bring it down and uh, make our clearance a little bit better on the top. So looks pretty good. We did one eighth inch aluminum, uh, like just like the original. So it should be just as strong as the original pieces. Whoops. Oh, have to be tight, baby. Look at that. So same construction as the previous one. One inch flanges all the way around. This one lines up with the very edge though. So we didn't have the capability of doing a flange on this, so we're just gonna weld this on the original aluminum here. And this is gonna be the base of our lowest bunk bed. So the bunk bed will come out a little bit wider. I don't know the width of this, maybe 15, 16 inches. It'll come out another 10 inches beyond this, but this will uh, be where the bottom of the bunk is after we have maybe two inches of insulation. So this looks really good, fits perfectly tight. I don't think it even takes any trimming. So let's, uh, yeah, it's nice and flush. If we open this up. Oh, we had a little bit of an impact right there. Don't know if you heard that. That is the, the spring, spring door making some impact. So we might have to cut that down and trim it. But this will be the size of our lowest left rear uh, storage box. All right, this is the cabinet I was most worried about because we did it in two pieces. So let's see if it works. Again, I haven't tried this yet, so this is pretty exciting. That fits okay. Yeah, it does too, actually. A little bit big. So this is going to be uh, the base of our dinette. You can see it's a little bit high right now, so I can trim that down without an issue. And this part sticks out a fair significant amount right here, so we might have to trim off um, a bit of the cutout to make sure that fits flush and nice and easily, so. Cool, the, the back one fits really nicely though. So the reason we did this in two pieces is because the piece of aluminum we had was, uh, uh, we could have it a lot smaller, um, so the material cost was less by doing a flange here. So we will rivet the lower triangle piece 
onto the upper triangle piece. Our final piece, nope, two more actually. Our third piece, fourth piece, whatever this is, fits between the cab and the ambulance. Uh, eventually we'll be cutting a window in here so we can have a pass through. I think I could just sit here looking at my super shiny wall. In fact, it kind of did. <laughs> that fit super tight, really nicely, no trimming required. So what I'll do on this section, just like the cabinets come through and rivet, so it's nice and clean, nice and secure, and that will create an airtight seal between our cab and the back while we're working on it. And again, at some point I'll cut a hole so we can do a climb through and have a pass through access. All right, here's what this looks like on the inside. That looks good. I love it. <laughs> it looks pretty sweet. I kind of like it all metal too. Our final piece is gonna fill that big old door back here. So we'll see if it fits. That fits really nicely. This kind of looks ridiculous. <laughs> it's like a mirror into Narnia. All right, so they're all in. I took the, the back covering off because it's just a little too dark in here for now. And so in summary, we had uh, the two rear cabinets and the rear door um, folded and cut and then the front corner cabinet in addition to the pass-through, and that was a total of $800 uh, for all of the cut material and folds. All right, Winnie, let's go outside. What you want? You wanna play? You wanna play? Go get your Frisbee. Go get it. All right, we've got one of the four cabinets in. Nope one of the three cabinets in. So I'll show you the process that we're using. We came in here, drilled a 3 16 inch uh, hole, and then we use our little hand tool, a uh, hand rivet, to rivet these in. If you don't know how a rivet works, by the way, uh, you put these in the hole, and the machine, or the hand tool, pulls the centerpiece and creates a rivet, or a um, a little grab on the outside. So this is what the opposite side looks like. Kind of pulls it in, makes it nice and snug all the way around. So yeah, first one's done. Fully secure. Very strong. The second cabinet is attached. Super secure, we've got rivets every, I don't know, six to eight inches all the way around. Uh, we'll come in here with, uh, we found a Marine 5200, so something that's really waterproof. And we'll come in here and seal up all of the cracks. It's actually quite airproof already. I'll show you this, check this out. This one we just did, and before it used to really slam, and the air keeps it from closing, so, we're, we've, we've already got quite an airproof seal to keep our cabin separate from the cabinets. But we'll come in here and seal this up, make sure we've got a nice airproof cabinet. I've been here before. I thought I was done doing insulation, but I was over eager and I spray foamed between the joints and realized I never sealed between the joints. So I'm gonna do some cutting, some grinding. Same here. I take all of my spray foam insulation out. Boop. All right, I'm putting the cabinet on, and you may be wondering why on earth I'm grinding out all the insulation. And the reason, of course, is that if I do put this cabinet on, I can't. I can't. 
can't get to that seam back there. So I'm gonna come in here, seal this, and then we'll put the cabinet on it. We're using 3M Marine Adhesive Sealant 5200. So it's supposed to be good below the water line. It's permanent, paintable. It should work plenty well to keep water out of the ambulance. All right, so we came in here, sealed this seam, and then I realized I had an open tube, so I came in here and did most of the rest of the ambulance. There's a couple gaps we still need to weld, so I have it. But the rest of the ambulance is now 5200 marined and sealed, so hopefully I don't need to take it off because I can't. in that little corner, they're airtight. Oh my goodness. Can I put the pen right here? That is fun. Okay. I, I put Ooh, it in How will we get up here? Okay, let's go through the door. Yeah. Now I put it in my pocket. Nice. Oh! <laughs> oh, the armor. What's new in here? What's new in here? Um, hey, look, they can't about this. Yep. What else? Plus, Dad, you put a table here. Yeah. Now we can sell this. Guess right? what that is now? Not yet. Guess what that is? What's it gonna be? A bunk bed. Are you using this as a mirror? Yeah. Can you, can you get to the driver part anymore? No. But what else? What? This is so dirty in here. What else? There's another cabinet behind you, Alton. That's closed off. Look to your left. Hey, <laughs> look, this is even, even growing. You can sit on this. Mr. Sawyer's back. 